Firstly, just let everybody uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, those who are living across the globe. And uh, my name is Tenzin Dhamma. I am uh, currently working as the program coordinator of Tibet House New Delhi. And I would like to request everyone, if you are comfortable with keeping your videos on, so kindly keep your videos on and uh, to keep your microphone on mute to that, so that uh, to avoid any interruption in between. <clears throat> Thank you. And Tibet House Culture Center of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama New Delhi, is delighted to welcome you all to commemorate today's gracious occasion, Chitul Tijin, uh, Butter Lamp of Butter Lamp Festival. It is also known as in Tibetan Jongachava, is one of the four Buddhist festivals commemorating four events in the life of the Lord Buddha, according to Tibetan calendar, uh, Tibetan tradition. Chudul Dijin closely follows Losar, the Tibetan New Year, and it takes place on the 15th day of the first month in the Tibetan calendar during the full moon. The first 15 days of the year celebrate the 15 days during which the Buddha displayed miracles for his disciples so as to increase their devotion to us. Uh, and Tibet House has organizers to undertake the ceremony of aspirational bodhisattva vows in English. And we requested Venerable Geshe Doji Damdula, Director of Tibet House Culture Center of His Holiness of Dalai Lama, to kindly lead the today's uh, aspirational bodhisattva vow for the long life and the swift fulfillment of the wishes of His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, and all the sentient beings. And now I would like to request Geshe to kindly lead the session. <coughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of you. Um, um, as Tenzin Rumla very clearly indicated that the today corresponds to the 15th day of the, the first month of the lunar calendar. And um, as per the Tibetan calendar, the first as uh, this month is considered as the, the the month, the first of the the first month of the new year. And um, yeah, in the Tibetan calendar, the new year considered Tibet new year, the Losar considered very important. And um, within Tibetan traditions, there are various ways. Um, the celebrating the New Year, uh, they at different occasions, depending on what kind of tradition, tradition that you're following. Uh, tradition following the, uh, say, the farmers' tradition, or uh, the 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 farmers and the other the commoners. So depending, and then some the more the aristocratic families. So overall speaking, the first day of the first month of lunar calendar is considered as the Tibetan New Year. And then the uh, more than the Tibetan New Year, the 15th day of the first month is considered very important. And the for the reason that the um the uh, common people um for common people say the the what they see um to find we are to help the buddha appearance uh, to help all the beings and to help the beings the beings vary in their uh, capacities in terms of their spiritual commitments and spiritual the the journey uh they differ as such that that the um, the <clears throat> as Purusharshana Deva indicated in chapter nine, the wisdom chapter, that the the world is consisted of the common 
common people and the yogis. Yogis here meaning who are spiritually realized, evolved, not just somebody who do physical exercises or yoga. So the, we should not be confused with these usage of these words. Are the common people and the yogis. And of course, the common people's thinking is outweighed by the yogis' thinking. And within the yogis, um, the Bodhisattva Shantideva clearly indicated that the, the higher, real, the more highly realized yogis, they super, supersede the realizations of the yogis of the, the lower caliber. So this is what we need to keep in mind. And it has many messages, that one of which is that the, we tend to be too naive to say that, oh, somebody's a spiritual, a spiritual practitioner and he has been to retreat for so many years and these then equate this person as a Buddha. This way we can go wrong. In fact, uh, what we need to keep in mind is that the in reality that spiritual realizations, they are of various levels. And uh, as ordinary person, we cannot really judge what is the level of the other person's spiritual realization. So, um, so this is the way in the manner in which the Buddha is held, the beings by sharing the Dharma, by giving the, the by sharing the wisdom to the beings. And the, it is not that everybody is like the realized yogis or the realized beings. So we do see that the the people sometimes, as the Buddha very clearly they clearly taught, sometimes we need to instead of giving dharma, we just give give some material gifts when somebody is deprived of material basic necessities, material gifts. And so some people who feel so demoralized, um, they, you know, they say console, uh, be a good listener to that person to let uplift the spirit of that person. So there are various ways by which to help the beings. And many of the, the commoners, common people, uh, they, they are more fascinated by miracles. And finally, Buddha very clearly indicated that it's only through the share of the wisdom that the beings can be liberated. And as <clears throat> the Acharya Naga clearly taught, or they explained in his uh, the Pramana Samuchaya, that the that how this enlightened being became the uh, became the the uh, the reliable guide is by is first of all motivated by great compassion and driven to look for the the path which helps to liberate all the beings. That is the wisdom of emptiness, and this wisdom of emptiness by no means anybody performing miracles can the, share the wisdom of emptiness with you. So it's only through somebody sharing this wisdom, you will learn it, you will reflect on this, you will meditate on this, only then the wisdom can be imbibed, otherwise not. But before we go through this, the, the people should be receptive to what you are to share, what the Buddha has to share. Uh, for them, what makes the, the person receptive is something which appeals them. For the majority of the people, common people, uh, the miracle is a great factor which can appeal them greatly. So because of which, uh, that the on the 15th day of the first month of the, the lunar calendar, the Buddha performed so much of miracles, not to entice the people, it is because of the, at the invitation of the, 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 the contemporary teachers who were very antagonistic, who were jealous of the Buddha's the reputation. And uh, they invited Buddha in a way like they invited Buddha for competition, saying that the, the Godama Buddha, you are not really a great teacher. You are just uh, you know, somebody who is a deceiver, who deceives so many people. And we, we are the real teachers. So if you don't uh, like the, say, the, we can see who is the real teacher. So we will uh, go for competition. So this was what the the five the the uh, the Tridika, uh, teachers, contemporary teachers who are contemporary with the Buddha Shakyamuni, they in a way like provoke the Buddha that you must uh, come to compete with with us. So it was done like three times, and every time the Buddha 
let's say they evaded the situation and they, they fixed the date and time, the, the timing and the place. And the Buddha on that day again, the Buddha left and they become even more, you know, the haughty. And finally, on this day, the Buddha accepted, okay, now as you please, we'll do that. And then the government so so much of say the miracles were performed by the Buddha, were performed by the the other teachers. The Buddha performed, and then finally all the uh, these the Tridika, the masters they were all defeated in the miracle performance. And uh, then the um, in Tibet, with the advent of Lama Tsongkhapa, 14th century AD, with the advent of Lama Tsongkhapa, uh, Lama Tsongkhapa. The, the established this day, 15th day, which when the Buddha performed so much of miracles, so it is like, say, the to be observed, to com commemorate this day as a very important day for the people to invoke the spirit of virtues, virtues to drive them towards the gade gade para gade para samgade bodhisattva. So, this was more observed as a very special day by Lama Tsongkhapa in Tibet in 14th century. So, since then, uh, this day became very special in the eyes of the, the, the Tibetan people and commemorating this as a very important day where uh, people involved in accumulating so much of merit, doing prayers, meditation, invocation, and so forth, remembering the Buddha's deeds as uh, the um, the how the, the kindness of the Buddha in ways to help the beings to take us from to drive us from very mundane samsaric miserable way to uh, towards the path towards a greater meaning of the spirituality. Okay, so the having said this, um, welcome you all to this program and Tibet House. It was His Holiness the Dalai Lama in 19, no, 2013 that one morning the, <clears throat> the sec one of the secretaries of His Holiness called me up and um, uh, told me that His Holiness wants you here in the hotel right now. Uh, so when he was in Delhi. And uh, then I rushed there. Then His Holiness gave me a whole lengthy advice on the how to run Tibet House. And then alongside the alongside the as a little bit of aggression, he also also said that Tibet also when you organize bigger programs, why don't you say make this a part of your program? Uh, taking an expression Bodhisattva said about say the of course we, we, we are not doing that as a part of Tibet's program, but as a part of Bodhicitta retreat. We've been doing this since uh, the two years before his holiness mentioned this. And uh, then the, so because that is, it came from his holiness directly. So then we made it a point that it is a part of the Tibetan program. And uh, the, and then also that in, for example, say uh, there are people in Delhi, uh, Bad Delhi, and uh, the, who could not come for Buddhist retreats because of the, you know, household responsibilities and small children responsible for the children and so forth. So because of which, uh, the, and given that they are here in Delhi and then the structure, the, the basic infrastructures here, the Tibet House infrastructures here, so why not we conduct this program? And then all this coinciding together mainly um, blessed by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So we the, uh, the started program known as the Bodhijita Day on uh, the on a monthly basis. And then sometimes they due to hectic schedule. We might have to do it once in two months or three months. Otherwise, we make it like a uh, the monthly program. And also that on some some special occasions like birthday of His Holiness Dalai Lama and today the Chudu um the on the fifteenth day of the, the first month of lunar calendar and so forth, we also undertake this um, Bodhisattva vow, which is um, the um, Bodhisattva vow that is given in mind that there are two kinds. One is the actual Bodhisattva vow and the other one is the aspiration Bodhisattva vow. There are two. For the aspiration Bodhisattva vow, which we take every time we do the Bodhisattva day, uh, that does not require 
the any commitments. Whereas for the actual Bodhisattva vow, yes, uh, the person should have some experience of Bodhicitta, may not necessarily have full-fledged Bodhicitta. If you have, that is best. If not, you must have some the experience of the, the universal compassion for all beings due to the practice of Bodhicitta. Not necessarily, not that, uh, not that yeah, somebody is naturally kind, so you can take the special, yeah, you can take the engaged Bodhisattva vow or the actual Bodhisattva vow. No, it is through some, the, it's a pre a practice of the Bodhicitta with the help of the two methods, the sinful cause of a method and the method of equalizing the exchanges of others with these two practices that you start to feel something different within you. Your mind is expanding, your compassion is expanding, not only confined towards your family members, but towards your, towards your neighbors, towards all the beings. You see that it's expanding, that too, on a very stable and with a gravity. So if this is what you start to feel, that okay, now this is this, if can be expanded more stably. This can perhaps be known as a bodhicitta. So when you gain such confidence, then you enter to take the uh, full-fledged bodhisattva vow. So till that point, you can take the aspirational bodhisattva vow. And what we have been doing here in Tibet House is always the aspirational bodhisattva vow. It's not the real actual bodhisattva vow. And this is for the aspirational bodhisattva vow. Anybody can take part in this. It's not necessary that one should be a Buddhist even. It's not necessary. You can be a non-Buddhist as long as you have a deep appreciation for the universal compassion to enter to take this Bodhisattva vow. And also that, the, the, the say the if at all you are to have a commitment, it is that from today onwards, I'll try my best not to harm others, if possible, try to render service, render help to others. If not, at least not to harm others. If this much, you can be committed, you and have to take this as Prince Bodhisattva. And of course, uh, for a wise person, for, a wise, for, for somebody to be wise, uh, to make a meaning out of one's life. So we see that otherwise we don't do this much, that I'll do something whereby, if possible, to render service and compassion towards others, if not, at least not to harm others. If this much, if we cannot commit ourselves, then the our life is like you know our, our life is so trivial, so trivial, just to feed a belly, and if this is the case, what a waste of this precious human birth, and if this were the case, then there was difference between the human beings and the dogs. There's no difference, so we should prove ourselves that we are slightly that we are different from the the animals, in ways that we have a unique thought which can do something more than what animals do. That is that if possible to help others, if not, at least not harm others. If this much, we can make commitment and then from there, that should be the starting point. From there, just see how to go further in your life, go more and more closer to us. Gade gade para gade para somebody Boris Waha. Okay, with this in mind, um, screen sharing. Uh, with this in mind, uh, setting a proper motivation and then the um, say keep in mind also that for information that why this day is very special is that the the first day of Tibet New Year. Now fifteen days passed, so these fifteen days are what the greatly Tibet. Greatly, uh, the uh, the great Tibetan masters in the past, um, the they have they have the say the they have really seen this as a very important day, and they practice practice so the intensely and involves so much of, uh, say the invocation prayers and so forth on this day. Because of this, this day is greatly blessed by these great masters. And of course, the Buddha Shakyamuni is one of the greatest deeds of the Buddha Shakyamuni to help the, 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 the sentient beings. Uh, so therefore, it is a very special day, and the Buddha himself made it, the, as they taught that on these very auspicious days, if you engage in virtues, the virtues will be multiplied a million times. So, with this in mind, the as the Tibetan great Tibetan masters, they always say uh, two things, the two deeds, um, they to be involved whenever one engages in virtues, one at the one at the outset and one at the end. At the outset, to set a proper motivation, and at the end, uh, dedicate the virtues properly. 
to the first part, the setting problem motivation. Let us um, set up properly and um, do, visual, do the visualization for the uh, refuge field. Visualize Buddha Shakyamuni, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in the space in front of us. From whatever tradition that you, uh, they they say the, the various teachers, various enlightened beings that that serve and they serve as inspiration to you pertaining to your cultivation of bodhicitta and wisdom of emptiness. Just invoke those enlightened beings in the space in front of us. And how you visualize that they are so kind, affectionate, and loving. And bodhicitta in the field, Visualize your two kind parents on the two sides. Even if you have difficulty with your parents, it doesn't matter. So particularly that the, the people who are the same who took who are here, you who come for this program, uh, it's a clear indication that you have something inside which drives you to say the do little more than at least little more than the ordinary beings, and uh, all these conflicts the parent children can fix all these things, they potentially are the indication of those are being ordinary, are being ordinary. So we are trying to transcend those. So with this in mind, and let us the, keep in mind your two parents, all the family members, including children, all other different sentient beings. All the other sentient beings with you, leaving that aside, the human beings, animals, Insects, hungry ghosts, hell beings, god and goddesses, spirits, everyone with you leaving them aside. And uh, the let us invoke the spirit. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all the ascension beings. On the same day, all the enlightened beings, like uh, the, 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 the 14th century AD, Lama Tsongkhapa and all the, the great master, masters of the Nyingma tradition, Sakya, Kaikyu, uh, Gelo, Chonang, Potong, Putun, all the great masters, and the today His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So all the great masters, they invoke the spirit of Bodhicitta on this day so intensely, remembering this greatly kind, the Buddha Shakyamuni, Buddha Shakyamuni's, the deeds of perform, having performed miracles to invoke, to trigger, to arouse the spirit of Bodhicitta within the minds of all dimensional beings. Okay, with this in mind, just invoke the spirit, may I become Buddha for the benefit of It can be very superficial, it doesn't matter. We'll say these three times together. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. Okay, with the spirit, uh, let us then recite the following verses together. And as you recite this, this is very important. I know that there are many of you who are new to this program. And uh, the when whenever we recite these verses, it's not just for the sake of recitation, so that something is increased, nothing. It's simply to invoke the, the power of your mind. As you recite this, there are three ways of reciting it. Number one, where the words flow. That's it. Number two, not only the words flow, but the meanings also flow. Number two, um, and number three, the words flow, meanings flow, and the experiences invoked. Three. And of course, for somebody, uh, for the experience to be invoked, we need to have some practice. But uh, the, at least we can do the, the, the second one, that is, where the words flow and the meanings are reflected. As meanings are reflected, this is a growth, where the growth is taking place. And finally, if, just by reciting the verse, the, the verses without the meanings reflected, uh, the, the benefit is there, but the benefit is far less in comparison with um, the somebody 
uh, reflect on the meanings. So with this in mind, let's be mindful to, to remember the meanings as we said the verses. And this is a great compassion. You taught the immaculate dharma to dispel all perverted views to you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. And this is a great compassion. You taught the immaculate dharma to dispel all perverted views to you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. And this is a great compassion. You taught the immaculate dharma to dispel all perverted views to you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. Sangye Juda Zoge Chonam La Chanjo Pardo Dani Gyapsu Che Tage Chinso Kebe Swanam Chola Penjir Sangye Jubare Shu Sangye Juda Zoge Chonam La Chanjo Pardo Dani Gyapsu Tage Chinso Kebe Swanam Ge Chola Penjir Sangye Jubare Shu Sangye Juda Zoge Chonam La Chanjo Pardo Dani Gyapsu Tage jin so ge be so nam ge do la penje san ge do bare shu. I go for a future and tell them enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulation through the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for a future and tell them enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulation through the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for a future and tell them enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. <coughs> Practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. In dependent origination, there is no ceasing, no rise, <coughs> no coming, no going, no separateness, and no sameness. I persuade to the consummate Buddha, the supreme among all teachers, to want to taught this peace, which is free of elaborations. I persuade to the mothers of the hearers, the Bodhisattvas, and the Buddhas. Which through the knowledge of all lead here is seeking pacification and complete peace, which through the knowledge of paths causes those helping migrants to achieve the aims of the world, and through the possession of which helps subdue and expand a variety of teachings. The one who is transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by altruism to benefit sentient beings, the teachers who gather and repeat to you and make persuasions. The one who has eliminated the web conceptualizations and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound, who turn the chance for the forever noble light rays to you, the Buddha, and make prostrations. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. Okay, as we said this mantra, the, let's remember the meaning uh, quickly. Uh, if Should they be uh, people who don't remember the meaning too well? Om, this is um, the this the syllable you recited, or without even the without without is also fine. So if you are added Om in general, uh, this is uh, the syllable which considers three letters A U Ma, and these three letters symbolize the body, speech, mind of the ordinary beings as well as the enlightened beings. Enlightened beings meaning all the enlightened beings, and also you when you become enlightened. When your Buddha nature becomes awakened fully, then your body, speech, mind at that point uh, become the, the uh, symbolized by the Aoma in the form of the enlightened body, speech, mind. And then the body, speech, mind that we have now, which are impure, uh, as we said, this should be a reminder for us that I should not remain as ordinary, some, somebody who is miserable, suffering. Instead, I should transform the body, uh, symbolized by the A, uh, into the enlightened body. And then the speech, symbolized by U, into a pure speech of the enlightened beings. And Ma, symbolizing the 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 mind, impure mind, to be transformed into the pure mind of the Buddha. So this should be a matter for us. In other words, to, to transform your body, speech, and mind, which are impure now, uh, to the state of perfect purity by awakening your Buddha nature within. And how? So that comes the next line, which says, Edar <clears throat> These phenomena, hetu, cause, these phenomena, cause, uh, prabhava, arise, these phenomena arise from the causes. This is how the language works. I uh, say the, say in some languages, uh, the verbs come first, 
and the nouns come later, the actors, the Asian comes later, and some of the Asians come first. So it's about the, the language, it doesn't matter. So these phenomena arise from causes. Dharm, ye dharma hetu prabhava. Hetum tesham tathagato hyavata. Hetum, plural form of cause. Tesham, these, these causes. Tathagato, tathagato, the one who has gone to the ultimate. One, the one who has gone to this suchness, referring to the Buddha, he have that taught. What these causes are, the causes of happiness, the causes of miseries, particularly the causes of miseries, which we, just, which we don't like, these causes, what these are, are taught by the Tathagata. He have that taught by the Tathagata Buddha. Tesham Jayo. Tesham, these. Jayo, whatever. Whatever of these, referring to these courses, whatever of these courses, nirota, cessation, bringing an end or bringing to the cessation of whatever of these courses, evam, thus, vati, again, taught or indicated, uh, the or said by Mahashramana, the great saint, great saint meaning the enlightened beings, the Buddhas, yeswaha, is established. In, in short, in summary, it says all phenomena, particularly the phenomena of miseries, which we dislike, the fear, anxiety, stress, and so forth, <clears throat> and the fear of samsara, and the fear of cognitive obscurations. All phenomena, particularly these, the miseries, arise from causes. And the causes, what these causes are, are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of the causes is what is taught by the great seer. <clears throat> Remembering this, um, this mantra uh, to be seen as a mirror for us that what I'm doing in my life does it really resonate with what the Buddha taught or it does not resonate? If not, how to make it the closer to us resonating with what the Buddha taught? So, this is what we need to uh, remember. And the when you travel by aeroplane, by train, by cars in the forest to escape for adventures in the ocean or oh, wherever you travel and uh, if you can recite this verse the uh, these lines remembering uh, the meanings and then recite this for all this innumerable trillions and trillions of the, the creatures the sentient beings and uh, that exist in the water in the wilderness in the forest in the air on the ground and they say for from aeroplane you see down you see the whole city like millions of people there, millions of people and trillions, trillions, trillions of the the spirits are there, uh, the insects are there, animals are there. Just pray for them. This is what I've learned from the Buddha Shakyamuni, and this is what I'm going to share with all of you. So just imagine how out of the eight billion human beings, forget about all these trillions and trillions of the the, the creatures on this planet Earth, the spirits, just innumerable spirits there. Even the eight billion human beings, how many of them heard the, the this mantra? So, so, so less. Even who claim themselves to be Dharma practitioners, many of them, this mantra is not popular. And this mantra was actually taught by the Buddha himself in the uh, the uh, the in the the, the the heaven, where and the Buddha spent like the, the say the three months there and taught this mantra there. And uh, this Buddha considered a so precious mantra, and uh, for sensible people, uh, yes, this is a reminder for us. It's not like a magical the incantation, but rather it's a reminder for us the how to the say the cognitively to transform to bring about effective transformation within yourself that you are the that you traverse on the path. Gade gade para gade. And then share this with all the beings there. Uh, this would be the greatest of the, your gift for the beings. And also today, say, you just say this, imagine that all the beings are hearing this Dharma, hearing this mantra, uh, when you're reciting this, and just talk, metal talk to them, that take this share of the, the Dharma from the Buddha Shakyamuni, and then the, apply this to your life, and the unfold your Buddha nature, uh, by applying the remedies, the bodhicitta and wisdom of emptiness and renunciation, so that your Buddha nature becomes awakened and that you don't have to suffer anymore at all. Okay, with this in mind, let us recite this together. Mm. 
Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam hetum te sham dathagato yavatat te sham chayo nirodham evam vati mahashramanaye swaha Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam hetum te sham dathangato yavatat te sham chayo nirodam evam vati mahashramanaye swaha Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam hetum te sham dathagato yavatat te sham chayo niroda evam vati mahashramanaye swaha all phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata, the cessation of causes as well as taught by the great seer. Profound, peacefully, elaboration free, clear light and non composite, such as Nectar and Dharma I have discovered, finding no one who can fathom this teaching in silence I'll return to the words. Okay, this verse this verse I'm gonna quickly explain and I know that uh, the many of you are from the Naran Masters course. And uh, perhaps to uh, and also those who are going to join the Nanda Tibbuma course, or the Nanda Mas uh, Bash One, Tibbuma NTC Bash One Two Three, and NCC. Uh, this verse and the is extremely important, so precious, and um, the is talking about the wisdom. Finally, say the uh, Buddha nature. We all have the seed of perfection, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. Whether you're from the east or the west, it doesn't matter. Whether young, old, it doesn't matter. Whatever the social status you come from, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a zero profession. From that point of view, everyone is just the same. We are all just equal. So knowing this, uh, the uh, that that in what way we are equal in ways that we have to put the nature see the profession within 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 us. Say so some people they have for example like His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the all these enlightened beings they have the they say uh, like one kg diamond or one kg gold, one kg gold where all the the the, the defilements all the mud are removed completely. Whereas in our case. Um, the, some of us, they are more mud, some are less mud, but the inside, what is inside is just the same. One kg, um, one, one kilogram of the gold, be it the Buddha Shaikya money, Jesus Christ, Buddha Shaikya, His Holiness of Dalai Lama, you, me, we are the same. Inside is just the same. There's a perfection. Um, but how to awaken this? So wise people will not wait for miracles to happen. Wise people will think of meticulously or systematically remove the metal dirt, or remove the, 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 the dirt from the gold. And what helps the, what will remove the, the dirt is the detergent. So the remedies, what remedies? Well, remedy lies in the wisdom of emptiness. So let's not forget it. So this verse, it said that this verse was said by uh, the Rahula, Arahat Rahula, the son of the Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, who said this, this is what I have actually seen this in a sutra. It said that he's the one who said this for his mother. So it says the um, it says down the what this beyond utterance. Yes, um, uh, to you the mother of the Buddhas. So this uh, the the mother as the, he refers this to the to his mother, the the Arahat Rahul, and for your information. As that the uh, the Prince Rahul or the Arad Rahul, uh, Rahula or Rahul, uh, plays a very important role in the Tibetan tradition. That the in terms of the uh, the Theravada tradition is followed in the Theravada um, the, the world, and uh, the all these practices what you see, 
of the Theravada, you see that uh, the same thing is in the Chinese traditions as, as well. And this tradition uh, is known as the Dharma Gupta tradition. And if you for information, say we need to, uh, so this one, uh, the Nalanda Master's course, Nalanda Diploma course, we are doing very systematic studies. So the benefit of this is that we will learn the, the, the reality of these Dharma very precisely. So for that matter, uh, the, the original tradition which the Buddha taught, which the Buddha taught, after the Buddha assuming Mahapari Nirvana, Buddha passed away, assuming, having assumed the passing away. Um, the Buddha's tradition, it was handed over to the first heir, uh, Mahakashyap, Arhat Mahakashyap. And uh, the many people thought that it was to be, that the Buddha was going to hand it over to his attendant, uh, the Arhat, the uh, Ananda. Um, it said the Buddha handed over to Mahakashyap. And the Mahakashyap, the, the second he passed, he in turn passed it down to Arhat Ananda. Uh, so Arhat Ananda became the second heir. The first heir was the Mahakashyap. So from there, this tradition gradually in time, they many, of course, more and more teachers, more and more evolved teachers came into existence. And their teachers, they have their own students. And that the, the traditions, they started to split. Not split in the, the because of contradictions, because of the different tradition, the uh, teachers. And then it split into 18 divisions over time, into 18 divisions, also known as the 18 divisions of the uh, the Vaibhashika the Vaibhashika school, 18 divisions. And it was actually the who's correct and who's who's wrong. All are correct. For example, today in the Tibetan tradition, we have Nyingma tradition, Sakya, Gelu, Kagyu, all are correct. It's just a matter of time. In time, the different teachers, of course, and the whole purpose of the Buddha is not just be handed over to only one person, but to lead all beings towards full awakening. That every as many should become enlightened. So many, many more enlightened beings they came came out, and then in different times, uh, the enlightened beings came in different places, different times, and from there their students are there, and then the different traditions came into existence. So, of the four, if uh, the eighteen divisions of the Buddha's teach and the, the Buddha's teaching which, and the say the inherited by the eighteen different uh, teachers in different times and places. Um, three survived today. The two of them survived today. The first one is one one of which is a Theravada, Theravada tradition. So that is are still alive in Sri Lanka, Burma, Thailand, and so forth. Second was second one is uh, the Dharma Gupta tradition. So is is it so like say that a study of, say, the university programs in India, university programs in Singapore, university programs in America, university programs in England, they're in different places. But uh, they, they know that the standard, the, the standard is much more the same, that from India, if you go to America, uh, then they will accept you as having done your uh, the undergrad or graduation or the, the doctorate, I was from America, somebody comes to Singapore, to, to England, or to India, and they will again take, they, they, these, are, these are just the same, are the standard of the, the, the learning. So likewise, these three are just the same, same, exactly same. And then the, what difference is there? This I'll explain a little later. And then what you find of the same practice that you find in Theravada is what you find in Chinese tradition, that is known as the uh, the Dharma Gupta tradition. And again, the same thing that you find in the Tibetan tradition that is known as Mula Sarvastivada tradition. And then the, then, then the Tibetan tradition is very really different. It has uh, Vajrayana, Theravada does not, doesn't Vajrayana. What is that? So this, for this we require a little bit of clarification that the, the basic foundation is just the same. Theravada, Mula Sarvastivada, and the Dharma Gupta. These three are same. And then the say Theravada remained as Theravada for the Chinese tradition. On top of the Dharma Gupta, they added the Mahayana tradition. One tradition meaning within Mahayana there are two: Sutrayana Mahayana and Vajrayana Mahayana. They added the Sutrayana Mahayana. So on the what Theravada practicing in the form of with a different label, Dharma Gupta, 
tradition. On top of that, the Sutra and the Mahayana has added. So we see that Mahayana Sutras, they become very they popular in the Chinese tradition. But underneath that, whatever practice that you find in Theravada, they are all you, you find in the Chinese tradition. In terms, in terms of the monastics, the rules, regulations, how the, say, the, the monastics, they come together, congregations, what kind of, the, say, the, the three uh, main pr the programs, uh, the, uh, the monsoon retreat, all these things just the same. And then the Tibetan tradition. The Tibetan tradition has the Mulisarvasvada, same as Theravada, Dharmagudda. On top of that, uh, the, what the Chinese tradition added, the Sutra, Sutra and Mahayana. That is added. On top of that, the third layer, Vajrayana, is added. So it has the three layers there. But it doesn't mean that the, the Tibetan tradition is supreme and all others are inferior. If this is a connotation, we are entering into self-deception. Self-deception and chauvinism. So instead, that all traditions are perfect, uh, that it entirely depends on the individual's, uh, say, the uh, mental propensity. If you have more inclined towards a purely just the uh, practice for personal liberation, then the Theravada is perfect. Whereas if you want to do the, you want to add to this the Bodhisattva's ideals, and uh, then then the Chinese tradition is perfect. And if you want to add, so with many different karmic factors. You meet with some teacher of the Vajrayana, and with the, of course, Vajrayana means that you should have the, the underlying Sutrayana system, for which you should have the Munasarvasivada, Theravada tradition. So these three layers must be there. As you go higher, the lower uh, must be there. The scaffolding must be there. If that is missing, the ground is missing, the upper is just a story. It's just like a, uh, what? This is a, not a genuine Vajrayana. So this is what you need to keep in mind. Now, how is that, what, what has that to do with Arahad Rahula? So for the Tibetan tradition, which is Mulasarvasivada, which is the same as Dharmagupta tradition and Theravada tradition, Mulasarvasivada tradition, the original abbot was Arahad Rahul, the Buddha's, the, Buddha's, uh, the son. He was the, the abbot, original abbot, of the Mulasarvasivada tradition. It was because of this, for the Tibetan tradition, uh, the whose monastic trainings, this all came from the Nalanda, and which in turn came from uh, the Arhad Rahul. So therefore, Arhad Rahul plays a very important role in this connection. And then here, we are talking about, so these are all a little bit of digression, which are very important piece of information, which otherwise we will never hear about these. So the, this verse was said by Arad Rahul to his, uh, for his mother, for his mother who passed away and who took birth in the, in the 37, uh, the God realm. So he said this to his mother. And uh, this, uh, and then in the context of the emptiness, this is so precious that finally what helps us to remove the metal dirt. The wise people will not expect miracles, but they will uh, look for remedies to remove the dirt so the gold inside will become manifest. So what is that remedy? The remedy is the wisdom, the mother, which is the the uh, the, uh, the Arad Rahula, referred to as the mother here, the wisdom of emptiness, uh, the, that application of which alone has the capacity to remove the metal dirt. So that alone is referred to as the liberating path. All other practices are referred to as the ripening path. And particularly people from NMC, NSC, you should be aware of this fact. These are the facts. Uh, on that basis, then you will know what is the real dharma. And then what you do becomes authentic and uh, the meaningful journey. Okay, with this mind, let's say this verse together. Count to kiss, Okay. Beyond our trends, thought and expression is the perfection of wisdom, which is unborn, unceased, and has the nature space. Is the object of apprehension of self-realized wisdom to you, the mother of the Buddhas of the three times our be obeisance. Okay, I'll, let me quickly explain what this line is. These lines are beyond our trends. So this expression, this emptiness, and of course for NMC and NDC, uh, we will learn what emptiness is. When you learn this. They say the the object in the form of emptiness that we're going to get 
uh, should be seen as the something which is beyond words. It does not mean that you cannot you can express it. There's not a connotation. So that itself, inexpressibility is what we could express. Inexpressibility. It is a very different connotation. Many people say the the inexpressibility as the object and the inexpressibility as the means, the mode. People confuse with the two things. So here the inexpressibility is the object, not the mode. If the mode is the inexpressible, the mode, then we can express it because the mode is missing. But the mode is not missing, the object. Object is the inexpressibility. Inexpressibility is the object, not the mode. So we need to make a distinction between the mode and the object. Many people, they confuse. Many teachers, uh, they say that, that, in fact, this is what I heard, are uh, saying that we are trying to express what is inexpressible. So the reality cannot be expressed. And the ultimate reality cannot be expressed. So all these studies are meaningless. This is total naivety of the individuals. And, uh, you know, you go into illusion, delusion, and you drive others into delusion also. So therefore, it is their failure. They've seen these words, they've seen these words, and they're just being too naive, not, no, not being able to distinguish between what is this, the, how profound this concept is, that inexpressibility as the object, not the, the mode. Mode is the expression. You express what is the inexpressibility there, so as the object. So this distinction, if you fail to make, then you're bound to end up saying that was the use of studies. Studies are, are trying to express something. Conceptual thoughts, they try to express something. And the, the reality is inexpressible. This is totally naivety. So uh, once you get this object in the form, what we call as emptiness, in the form of the inexpressibility, this is something they say which cannot be described as is or is not beyond utterance, meaning that Say that it cannot be described as is or is not. And with a thought, your thought cannot think of, or oh, this is this, or this is that. And what does it, what sense does it make? So this will make sense to those people who are exposed to the distinction between the two analysis, ultimate analysis and the conventional analysis. In the eyes of the conventional analysis, yes, things can be expressed. But in the eyes of the ultimate analysis, failing to make this distinction then you will never understand this verse if you make this if you're able to make this distinction then this verse becomes extremely profound that if you get a clue of this even a glimpse of this it will make you run into tears and to have said goosebumps in the body okay an expression uh, the beyond our friends thought and expression is the perfection of wisdom so in the eyes of ultimate analysis and also ultimate analysis, this emptiness, which you're going to see, seeing of which your mental defilements will all stop and the gold will shine inside. That is to be seen as which is unborn. It's not something that uh, comes into existence like a child, like they say the Buddhist, they, like uh, the Buddha Shakyamuni, who came into existence, who was born 2,500 years ago, and before that he was non existent. Likewise, this ultimate reality, uh, which is born, and before that it was non-existent. No, it, it existed forever. It is unborn, unceased. It never ceases, and has the nature of space. It does not have any elaborations, just a space, a vacuum. See, in the experience of the ultimate analysis, where you see that all what we are seeing, these are all deceptively being created by your mind. So, like space. Is the object of apprehension of self-realized wisdom, meaning that when you go to this level of the ultimate analysis, and that too manifests in the form of, I say, the 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 non-dual experience, self-realized wisdom. This is the mother of all the Buddhas. This experience gives birth to the beings to become Buddhas, mother of the Buddhas, or three, three times of the obeisance to this wisdom of emptiness. So knowing this. Then your respect for the, the your respect and sense of value for the wisdom of emptiness will become extremely at the say the high, <clears throat> and then uh, you will realize that where the wisdom of emptiness is involved, there is a dharma practice. Where there is missing, then the something is missing. A major thing is missing, like the engine of the machine is of the car is missing. 
Okay, well, this month we'll let's say this again together, we're trying to, as much by reflection on the meanings. We are not friends, thought and expression is a perfection of wisdom, which is unborn, unseized, and has a nature space. It's an object of apprehension of self realized wisdom to you, the mother of the Buddhas, of three times I be obeisance. The four seeds of Buddha's teachings. All composite things are impermanent. All contaminated things are the nature of suffering. All phenomena are the nature of emptiness and selflessness, transcending the sorrow of peace. The Guru is the Buddha, the Guru is the Dharma, likewise the Guru is the Sangha, the Guru is the source of everything wholesome, I go for refuge in the Guru. By the sound of the vibrant drum of Dharma, you liberate all beings of miseries. I beseech you to kindly of remain and give teachings until the end of the expanse of billions of eons. The Buddha does not watch the negativities of beings, nor does he remove their miseries by his hands. His spiritual realization is not transferred to them. It is by teaching the truth of the suchness that the beings are liberated. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all bewildered miseries gloom. If you are attached to this life, you are not a spiritual practitioner. If you are attached to samsara, you have no renunciation. If you are not attached to your own self-interest, you have no bodhicitta. If there is grasping, you do not have the view. <clears throat> okay, so today being the the day, the Buddha Shakyamuni performed miracles for us. Let us remember the Buddha's qualities and let's recite this. Um, the say, the Buddha is being praised for his qualities, and uh, not that if you praise the Buddha, then the Buddha will be very happy and grant blessings to us. If you don't praise the Buddha, Buddha will be very upset and he will not grant uh, the blessings to us. This is total naive way of thinking of the small children-like people. Instead, um, whether you praise the Buddha or not, it doesn't matter. Like a mother who embraces all our children equally, and uh, whether you praise or not praise, the mother will embrace you with total love and affection. So this is what the Buddha does. But then why do we have to praise the Buddha Shakyamuni if that is the case? Is that to identify what are the qualities on the basis of which the Buddha Shakyamuni is being praised. And knowing these qualities, that you too have the potential to become the fully awakened one. And then knowing that these are the qualities by which somebody is, is and the designated or is assigned, is referred to as a Buddha, and likewise, these are the qualities which I also have to cultivate. And see if you have some of these qualities within you. If you do have, rejoice and see how to nurture them further. Whereas if you see that these are missing in us, although the qualities may be missing, but the seeds of the qualities, no doubt, they are with you, with all sentient beings. So knowing that you have these seeds, um, try as much to cultivate these qualities and then see how to nurture them further. So this is the only way by which we can go from the state of misery to a state of ultimate happiness, as the exemplified by the Buddha Shakyamuni. Okay, we'll say this together. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond the four destroyer, completely perfected, full awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugada, Lord of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, subdued from the Shakya clan, I persuade, make offerings and go for refuge. When O supreme amongst humans, you are born on this earth, you pace of seven strides, then said, I am supreme in this world, to, te to you who are wise, then I prostrate. With pure bodies, forms supremely pure, with emotion like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, when of the worst, law to you, I prostrate. With a supreme science, face like a spotless moon, color the gold to you, I prostrate. Trust really like you, the three worlds are not, and compatible wise one to you, I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the founder having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like vast ocean, to you, the Tathagata, I prostrate. The purity that frees one from their attachment, the virtue that frees one from the lower realms, one part, the sublime pure reality, to the Dharma that pacifies, I prostrate. Those who are liberated and also show the path to liberation, who you feel qualified with the realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you the Sangha I prostrate. 
to not commit any non-virtuous actions, perform only perfect virtuous actions, subdue your mind thoroughly, this is the teaching of the Buddha, a star, a visual aberration, a flame of lamb, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, see condition, things as such. Through this merits, may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the mind of the four faults, and be delivered from samsara's ocean, perturbed by the ways of aging, sickness, and death. Okay, let us recite the Heart Sutra. And um, the, if possible, see if you can recite the Heart Sutra on a daily basis. And while remembering the meanings, reflect on the meanings. Okay, so this mind, um, for these three things to keep in mind with the background explained in the, at the outset, followed by three points. Number one, um, what is the question asked by Shariputra to Aravalukiteshvara? How should child of the lineage practice the professional wisdom? And then the, um, the response given by Aravalukiteshvara to Shariputra that that the somebody as the lineage holder of the Buddha, meaning that somebody who aspires to become Buddha, you have to remove the metal dirt so the Buddhahood will become manifest. So what will help you to remove the metal dirt is the wisdom of emptiness. What is the wisdom of emptiness? The wisdom to see that everything is like a dream. So in what way everything is like a dream? Everything like what? Yourself, your five aggregates, the four, four noble truths, the 12 links of dependent origination, and then the uh, how to uh, then the eighteen elements, the the twelve sources, and how they are all like dream. In other words, everything that you, that you can think of, they are all like dream, all coming from your subject, nothing really from the object. The moment you you wake up from the dream, you realize that the dream was dream. So that helps us to be free from the, uh, the from being affected by the dreams. So, um, and then the uh, this is the response given by Advaita then what benefit? The benefit, um, the number three, the benefit, it said that the, this is how all the, the Buddhas of three times, they traverse, they enter through this gate of the wisdom of emptiness uh, to the state of the perfect liberation. And this is what helps you to remove all the fears of life. Okay, let's see this together. <clears throat> and imagine that all beings are with you, the Heart Sutra, the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the irretrievable gem. Thus did I hear at one time the Buddha was dwelling on a mass of vultures mountain at a large griha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Buddha was absorbed in the concentration of other categories of phenomena called profound illumination. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Aravalukiteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound illumination of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, how should any child of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom train? He said that in the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Aravalukiteshvara, said this to the Venerable Sharit Vadiputra, Sharitputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five years also as empty of inner nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Empty is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, composition factors, and consciousness empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are empty, without characteristic, unreduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled, not Shariputra. Therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no composition factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no no visual form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no object of touch, no phenomenon. There's no eye element and so on, up to and including no mind element and no mental conscious element. There's no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and no so on, up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. <clears throat> Similarly, there's no suffering, origination, cessation, path. There's no exalted wisdom, no attainment, also no non-attainment. Shari Buddha, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the professional wisdom, the mind without obscuration and thus without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, the end point of nirvana, all the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifest and completely awaken, unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on professional wisdom. Therefore, the mother of the professional wisdom, the mother of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mother equal to the unequaled, the mother that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as truth since it is not false. The mother of professional wisdom is declared 
किया था ओम गादे गादे बारा गादे बारा सम गादे बोरी स्वाहा शेर बुत्रा द बोरी साथ वो मां साथ वो शुरू ट्रेन इन द प्रोफ़ाउंड प्रोफ़ेशनल विस्तम लाइक दैट तेरे ने बुद्धि रोज़ में दर कंसेंट्रेशन कमाने द बोरी साथ वो मां साथ वो आरा बिल्कुल तेज़ बारा सेइंग वेल सेड वेल सेड सन ऑफ़ द लीनेज इट इस लाइक दैट इट इस लाइक दैट You want to practice a profound professional wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even that the Thakurdas rejoice, the Buddha having thus spoken, Venerable Sharita Vatiputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravalu Vidishvara, those around the entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that is spoken by the Buddha. Okay, let's recite this uh, mantra together, and let us remember the meaning. That the imagine that Buddha Shakyamuni is exhorting us thus. Uh, don't remain in fear of samsara. Come, come to the ultimate happiness by awakening your Buddha nature within, by removing the mental defilements, by relying on the wisdom of emptiness, tempered by bodhicitta, the unconditional of the bodhicitta, supported by renunciation. And you're hearing what the Buddha Shakyamuni is, is um, exhorting. Uh, you then remind all, you inform this to all the dear Mother beings that everyone hearing what you are saying. Um, they they are so pleased to join you in this journey of cleansing the mind to take uh, to uh, to go to the state of ultimate happiness. <clears throat> parasam gate bodhi swaha tyatha om gate gate paragate parasam gate bodhi swaha tyatha Om Gati Gati Para Gati Para Sam Gati Bodhi Swaha Tiyata Om Gati Gati Para Gati Parasam gati bodhi swaha. By the teachings of three supreme jewels possessing the power of truth, may the outer hindrances be transformed, may they be dispelled, may they be non-existent, may they be pacified, may all negative forces opposed to the Dhamma may be completely pacified, may the whole 80,000 obstacles be pacified, may we be separated from problems and conditions harmful to the Dhamma, may all enjoyments be in accord with the Dhamma, may all species of perfect happiness pervade this place now. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, um, we'll switch to the foundation of all good qualities. Um, this is the this is roadmap to the full awakening. And uh, just see that the whatever the practice that you're doing, anything, whatever you may be doing from whatever tradition, if you aspire. If you're somebody who aspires to become enlightened or to become Buddha, then it doesn't matter which tradition that you're following, Sakya, Kajyu, Nyingma, Gelu, Chinese tradition, it doesn't matter. Whatever tradition that you're following, just see that what you're doing includes these points. Points, 14, point, 14 verses. Uh, they, all the points are indicated in the 14 verses. And if you see that something is missing, you should be uh, you should be, um, be watchful to see that the... Um, to include that what is missing this roadmap and uh, whereas if you the anyone who's learned it from any tradition reading this will see that this is the roadmap okay with this in mind uh, let's say this together the foundation of all good qualities by laman sunkarma the foundation of all good qualities as a kind and perfect pure guru correct devotion to him is the root of the path by clearly seeing this and applying great effort Please bless me to rely upon him with great respect. 
understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once is really meaningful and is difficult to find again. Please bless me to generate the mind that unceasingly day and night takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly decays and death comes. After death, just like a shadow of law's body, the results of virtuous and non virtuous karma fall. Finding firm and definite conviction in this, please best but always to be careful to abandon even the slightest negativity and accomplish all virtuous deeds. Some side expenders are unsatisfying and unreliable, seeking them as a door to all suffering. Recognizing these shortcomings, please bless me to generate a strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Led by this spirit of thought, mindfulness, alertness, and great cushion arise. The root of the teaching is keeping the Pratimaksh of ours. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the same samsara, so have all my migratory beings. Please bless me to say this, train in supreme bodhicitta and bear the responsibility of freeing my greater beings. Even if I develop bodhicitta but I don't practice the three types of morality, I will not achieve enlightenment. With the clear recognition of this, please bless me to practice the bodhisattva vows with great energy. Once I pacify distraction to wrong objects and correctly analyze the meaning of reality, please bless me to generate clearly within my mind stream the unified part of karma abiding especially inside. Having become a pure vessel by training the general path, please bless me to enter the holy gate with the fortunate ones, the supreme visor of eagle. At that time, the basis of accomplishing the two attainments is keeping pure vows in Samaya. As I am become firmly convinced of this, please bless me to protect these vows and bless like my life. The MNM realized the importance of two stages as on Vajrayana by practicing with great energy. Never give up the four sessions. Please bless me to realize the teachings of the Holy Guru. Like that, may the Guru who showed the noble path and the special friends who practice it have long lives. Please bless me to pacify completely without any hindrances. In all my lives, never separated from perfect Gurus. May enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing the quality of the stages and the paths by creating the state of Vajratara. Um, now we'll switch to the uh, the full practice. Okay. Um, the four things that we include. Number one is. Um, number one is the um, single point of meditation. Uh, number two is the renunciation. Number four, bodhicitta. Number no, number three, bodhicitta. Number four, the wisdom of emptiness, and then conclude with the bodhisattva taking the aspect. Conclude with the aspect of bodhisattva vow. Okay. Uh, for this practice, uh, let's say that the single point of meditation. Given that most of you already know how to do a single point of meditation, quickly, if you, if there are some who are not aware of who don't know what is a single point of meditation. So four things to keep in mind. One is the body posture. Just the most important thing is uh, sit upright and should not lean against the support, number one. And then the uh, your body must be very flexible. It should not be rigid. And your head tilted for a little bit and eyes not closed, eyes half open. Eyes half open and uh, 45 degrees cast down and just ignore this. And then your the teeth and lips in the natural course and the tongue are touching the upper palate to avoid excessive accumulation of saliva in the mouth. And your right hand on your left hand, tips of two thumbs joining, forming triangle, place the two hands on your lap in a restful state and breathe normally. And what do you focus on? The focal number two focal point, focal point, are that we can do uh, do two things together. One is a, a visualizing a tiny white dot tiny white round dot between your nose and upper lip and uh, multitasking. While you focus your mind on the tiny dot, uh, count your breath. Breathe in, breathe out, cycle one. Breathe in, breathe out, cycle two. This is what we're going to do, what we're going to do for five minutes. So these two things happen together. And um, the some of you may find it a little difficult, simply because it's difficult for during one session doesn't mean that you have to uh, the switch it. You can practice for about like one week and if things uh, still you cannot manage both, you can do only one, then choose one of these two, either the visualization or the count of the breath. Good. Point number three are the the errors of meditation. There are two potential errors. 
number number one is mental excitement, which is the overactivity of your, your mind. Mental excitement, the uh, the uh, excitement involving mental scattering, distraction, and so forth. And the other one is mental anxiety, inactivity of your mind when your mind becomes too lax, sloppy, sinking. And should any of these two things happen, go for number four, apply the remedies to overcome the errors. What are the remedies? Twofold. Number one is the introspection, to keep an eye on your mind, to see if your mind is meditating or it is falling into luxury or it is carried away by the, the excitement. With this, the introspection, if you see that your mind is either in an excited state or in a lax state, then apply the mindfulness, like the rope, bring the mind back to the intended option of meditation. Are you ready? Five minutes.
Okay, thank you. Next, for the renunciation, we do the four measurables. Okay, sorry, the four seals. <clears throat> um, for us to reflect on four seals, it is uh, the um, very good for us to reflect on these four seals on a daily basis. Uh, for the reason that we are bound to, we are bound to face with challenges, tragedies. Uh, with the loss of near and dear ones and so forth, and uh, the by re, by always being reminded as of these realities, all composite things impermanent, all contaminated things, things are suffering nature, and not just resigning the lines but reflection of meanings. Then the um, I would say that it, it would have multiple benefits. One obvious benefit is that when you go through, when you do go through say the the sudden shocking uh, situations like tragedies uh, you will not be really in the grip of the, the shock uh you will say okay this is uh, this is the reality which hits everybody number one number two that the uh, it is like a cumulative effect a cumulative effect where um that over time say after two years three years four years five years uh, your basic outlook of the world gradually changes and makes the it becomes more and more and more meaningful that the sometimes which you know the thoughts which never came to you before like the impermanence very strong feeling of impermanence and the the reality that that pervades the whole world, not only you. Whereas the by reflecting on these, if you feel depressed, if you go into depression, then it's not too healthy. Instead, these reflections done in a very systematic way. Whereas if you do it very suddenly, take up the say, like a retreat, like oh, I'll sit for one month retreat just on this impermanence and suffering. If you do it, it's like a sudden jerk. It can be quite uh, the, it can make you go a little bit of depression, but if, whereas if you do it very stably, like taking a dose every day, um, then your outlook of the world can change without the affecting you, on the, the without giving you a sudden, like a, uh, the jerk of, um, or a sudden shock. Without that, you could still feel feel that this is the reality of the world, and thus there's nothing really there from the world, which in essence is so there's something, uh, the which we have to you know to be envious of or to be so attracted by. This is the reality. So the so the billionaires they have to leave the world, and if you have you know they say they if you have a children. Or as a children, then okay, at least you know somebody. I'm going to give. This will be take. I will give pass it down to somebody. Actually, who is that somebody? You take it to the next birth, and you may be you know somebody who envy that that person, to whose in whose hands you have left the wealth. Now it's no more yours, and you have no idea that it was you who left it with that person. But you may envy that person. Oh, he's so fortunate. She is so fortunate. One thing. Uh, so those people who rather leave things for the, the community service, for the welfare of others, rather than my my, instead of that, for the, the community, for the welfare of others, for charity and so forth. No doubt you have so much merit. So this merit you will take, although the wealth you, you left it behind. But the wealth is transformed into merit, and you may carry the merit. But for those people who left it with your with your children, uh, just for children, children, then the wealth is left, and it, it is not transformed to merit. So you you are left, you are, you leave it nothing. Uh, okay, so these are the, the things that we keep in mind. So what I'm saying is that yes, at a certain point, I I've come across, and you know, for example. The one person passed away during the COVID time, and way before that, 
the person was they, there was a lady who was uh, the it was before she she passed away to COVID. Um, the she talked to me and she said that the she has this property, the house, and this house, she was thinking of giving a half to to Tibet House, and then the uh, Tibet House in Delhi, and then the. Um, because I came to sense that she and she they did not really have her own children and she was not keen to leave it in the hands of her the nephew nieces and so forth. And they um so the so there I see that there must be such situations there. People who become desperate, who don't want to leave it to anybody else's hand, and then but you are leaving, you cannot carry it with you. This is the reality. So when you think of these uh, the I would say that the um, that these reflections, all composite things, are impermanent, all contaminated things, and then how you see the world can be very different. How you see it in one way with a different situation, suddenly you see that that the, you have to leave everything has to be left behind. Then you see the world is very different. All this what we call as a wealth is like a, the, the stones and just meaningless things these reflections, these thoughts can come to your mind. So, what I would say is that finally to look for a greater meaning of one's life. Uh, this life, next life, next life, life, and eventually awaken the pseudo professional where nothing really matters. Well, why this wealth? So that I'll be happy. Why this, you know, they, they, this, all these facilities and so forth? So that I'll be happy. Why this power? So that I'll be happy. Why this, this? So that I'll, why adventure? So that I'll be happy. And the real happiness is not outside. The real happiness is inside. Just awaken this only when this, the, these factors, they do a little bit once in a while. They you know remove a little bit of the the uh, the the dirt, a little bit of dirt, the factors. And suddenly you feel a joy there, and you think that this coming from outside. It's not coming from outside. It's from inside. So only the wise people will not rely on the will not heavily rely on external factors to to retrieve this happiness from inside. Wise people will directly go into inside to retrieve what is inside, to remove the dirt and retrieve. And then once that is awakened, and the that is ultimate, is the infinite happiness and the total fearlessness. So this is what we should be seeking. So with this in mind, um, the, the, we will meditate on the four, the four seals, and as we do that. Uh, let's keep in mind that what are you doing is not for the sake of a ritual, no, and uh, the is for the people to learn. And oftentimes people ask me, you know, how should I meditate? How should I have a consistent practice so that I'll continue to grow as I grow older physically, actually spiritual, so that I can grow. So what can I practice? So what are you doing here? For the uh, taking the aspirin Buddhist vow as a part of this program, all what we're doing, this we had, we do that for people to learn from this, that people learn how to practice, how to I uh, say they do the practice on a daily basis. Are you ready? Um the meditations of two kinds, single pointed meditation and the the analytical meditation. So the first part which we did is a single part of meditation. Now we're going to do the analytical meditation. So the Bodhicitta, renunciation, wisdom, emptiness, they're all analytical. And once your experience of Bodhicitta, experience of uh, wisdom, emptiness, and the renunciation, they become very stable, very solid and stable. Then you can, I say, the employ a single part of meditation with these three things as well, emptiness, wisdom, emptiness, Bodhicitta, and renunciation. Are you ready? <clears throat> so, given that this is purely analytical I, and it's going to be guided meditation, uh, you just follow the instructions and don't try to make any correlations, whatever, with what you're doing now versus what you have learned before. Don't make any correlations. Just try to follow the instructions uh, to invoke your uh, the experiences to the best you can. And if you want to correlate, not now, you can correlate later on after the class, then you can, after this uh, session, then you can correlate 
for the time being, let's try to invoke the, the experiences. Okay, ready? And the four seals is primarily for activating your renunciation. <clears throat> Without renunciation, bodhicitta is impossible. Without bodhicitta, Buddhahood is impossible. Without bodhicitta, wisdom and emptiness cannot be resorted to uh, remove your current obscurations, without which Buddhahood is possible. So for therefore, we see that all these things are connected to each other. Uh, it is for this reason that Lama Tsongkhapa emphasizes so much on the need for us to have a holistic understanding of the, the complete aspects of the the path to enlightenment. Ready? Renunciation. Renunciation is to renounce our miseries. Is to renounce our miseries, not to renounce our happiness, but to renounce our miseries. We are seeking the total fearlessness, liberation from all forms of miseries. And how to remove the miseries? How to renounce the miseries? For this, the wise people will turn to the Buddhas teaching he dharma he tu prabhava he tum te sham tathagato he avatat to renounce the miseries we need to know how to renounce causes of miseries and what are the causes of miseries to be renounced the cause of, of the miseries the Buddha indicated the four misconceptions the ignorance ignorance which misconceives impermanent phenomena as permanent which misconceives miseries as happiness, mis which misconceives impure things as pure, which misconceives what is devoid of selfhood as of self-nature. First, to remedy the first ignorance, the Buddha taught all composite things impermanent, and this impermanence is of two kinds. So as we are learning, as we listen to this, don't just let your mind flow with it only, but also try to remember these points because later on you're going to do your own meditation without the help of somebody else. <clears throat> All composite things impermanent. And impermanence is of two kinds, the gross and the subtle, the manifest impermanence, whose continuum of the objects ceases. For example, 2022, it stopped altogether. And our youth, stopped altogether. They are gone. Now, in this life, say the how, the how old you are and how old you were in 2022, it will never come back in this life. It's gone forever. Two hundred years ago, people who were there perhaps 5 billion human beings on this planet Earth. And uh, the some of them go into indulgence. Some of them are into them practice. Some of them worrying about their children. Some of them in hospitals and so forth. And today, where are these people who are into indulgence, who see that the whole world is just this indulgence, they will go. What about those parents who worry about the children, the children who worry about their careers, so forth, they're all gone. In other words, none of the five billion human beings who existed like 200 years ago is alive today. They're all gone. It's not that these people are unfortunate, that we are the fortunate ones. No. 200 years in the future from today, not even a single person, or not even a single one out of eight billion human beings will be alive then. If you don't believe, look at the Bahmin Buddha. Bahmin Buddha, just imagine. Hundred years ago, some people, local people, they created that with so much of devotion, respect. And now imagine, people who destroyed that. Who are these people? These are the descendants of the same people who created this. Which means that people who created this, the people who destroyed, they have no clue of their own ancestors. We, let us not only think about those people, think, about, think of yourself. Do you remember your great-grandparents? Do you remember your great-great-great parents? Do you remember? Forget about 
say 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago. Forget about these. Even the Buddha, we have no clue. We are not too sure about his dates. They've forgotten. The humanity has forgotten the dates. The date on which the Buddha actually took birth on the planet Earth. So, if that were the case, what a mention of our own ancestors, what a mention of us after 200 years, after 300 years, 400 years, will all disappear, will fade away from the, the even from the memory of the future generations. Your own grand, 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 great grandchildren, they'll all forget, have no clue who you were, who, who existed 200 years in the past. This is impermanent. Yes, that's true. For some excuses, with this cancer, with this accident, with this old age, whatever, for, for some excuses, everybody has to leave this earth. And this is reality. And those, these impermanent, when you have a beautiful sunset, you're watching a beautiful sunset, beautiful the beach, the beautiful rainbow, when you watch it, let us remember that a day will come that this beautiful rainbow will disappear, this, this beautiful beach will disappear, this beautiful sunset will disappear. And all this gross impermanence whose continuum comes to an end is possible only if there's a subtle impermanence involved, which is momentariness. The change that you see over the span of one year is possible only if there's a change happening on the monthly basis, weekly basis, daily basis, hourly basis, minute by minute basis, second by second basis. Only with the changes that you see on that level, the millisecond level, nanosecond level, then the visible changes that you see over the years, over 100 years, 1000 years, the Sphinx, for example, is all decade. And the all these huge, massive structures, today we see as decade a lot. These did not decay overnight, over the centuries and millennia. And this happened because of changes that you see in the, the yearly basis, monthly basis, weekly basis, daily basis, and our daily basis, hourly basis, and minute, second, millisecond, nanosecond. Yes. In other words, all what is a composite phenomena should necessarily be undergoing this momentary change move so fast. Yes, that's true. That's true. If you don't reflect on this, we are being deceived by seeing things as permanent. When we see things as composite things as impermanent, we see that our mind will be taken to a very different reality. We come closer to the, the knowledge of the reality. This will take us to a greater meaning. What meaning? Given that thing, the composite things are moving so fast. Imagine that you are thrown in a very fast moving train. What do you think? The faster the train moves, the more the fear. We don't know where this train is taking us. And who decides where this train, train, the fast moving train takes us? It's decided by the, the driver. If the driver is your mother or the father, no no that will that train will take you to a picnic spot. But if the driver is under the dictate of the demons or the terrorists, will only take you to the slaughterhouse. In that case, the driver is a mind. And this mind takes us to make a body move so fast, a mind move so fast. And the whole world is moving so fast. And where's this fast train of our mind, of our, the, our, our body, ourself? It's taking us, is run by the driver, our mind. And unfortunately, our mind is under dictate of the two demons, two terrorists, self-grasping, ignorant, self-centered attitude. As long as our mind is under dictate of these two terrorists, it will only take us to a slaughterhouse of the miseries. This is what the Buddha taught us, the all contaminated things are the days of nature, where my, our mind is dictated by contamination, the worst of which is self-grasping ignorance, complemented by self-centered attitude, only, it will only take us to miseries. Miseries like what? Sickness, aging, death, tension, depression, anxiety, anguish, the pain of losing near and dear ones, and so forth, attracting all the fears. Yes, that's true. When these, when will these miseries start? 2022 start on its own. We do not do anything to stop it. 
it stopped. When will these miseries stop? Yes, let's not let us not they say equate these the, the all the impermanent phenomena. Impermanent phenomena, there are various kinds, some of which will stop on their own, some of which will never stop. 2022 stopped on its own. Your youth stopped on its own. Your birth stops on its own. But the time will never stop. Your self will not, never stop. Your mind will never stop. This third category, which only with a concerted effort will be stopped. Where the effort is not put, will never stop on its own. It will keep perpetuating. Like what? Like your miseries, like your self-grasping ignorance. As long as self-grasping self -grasping either continues, your miseries will continue. Yet, this will can be can brought to an end with concerted effort. What kind of concerted effort? Concerted effort to introduce counter force to the root cause of miseries. What's root cause of miseries? Root cause of miseries, which the, the Buddha taught as the, the ignorance which the Arindagarjuna further elaborated by explaining the season karma self afflictions is nirvana. Karma self afflictions arise from conceptualization of the inappropriate tension, which in turn arises from the elaboration of self grasping ignorance. And this elaboration of self grasping ignorance ceases through the wisdom of emptiness. It is only through the concerted effort to bring this wisdom of emptiness to light, very forcefully intense and very forcefully with new mind, that the, the negative force. Ignorance can become rid of and the miseries will come to an end. What is that wisdom like? This wisdom, by very definition, is a dis discerning mind whose apprehension of the object tells with the reality. What's the reality? The reality is what the Buddha what the Buddha has indicated as the third seal. Everything is the nature of emptiness selfishness. Okay, we'll, let's quickly mention your emptiness. <clears throat> And uh, if there are one or two who are not really familiar with the emptiness, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give you just a, a cursory, although it can be a very cursory form of understanding, a very superficial understanding, it doesn't matter. And those of you who are already, who are already exposed to the wisdom of emptiness, uh, you can, um, for you it can be very profound, for others it can be a cursory, it doesn't matter. This is how we proceed. Okay, what are you doing? I'm meditating. And what is your body doing? My body is uh, in a meditative state. <clears throat> okay, just try to see how this self appears to you. Who you identified as this self appears to you as like a dream that your mind is creating it, or no, it has nothing to do with the dream. It's so objective, solidified that there. Of course, it appears so solidified as objective there. This belief that this exists, this self identified as I, existing is so objectively real, this is known as self grasping ignorance. And this is the root of all your miseries. Okay. How can I know that this ignorance, this is not a valid mind? Remember what Arinagarjuna said if the mirage were to be water, why not those close by the mirage see water? In a similar to Hogan reasoning, if the self would exist as objectively real, why not I see the self as a glow closer to this object? Okay, now let us subject the self by going closer to the object, by subjecting the self to ultimate analysis. So this mind, which goes closer to this object beyond the mere convention that the convention is known as ultimate analysis. Let us now subject the self to ultimate analysis to see if the self does exist objectively. Um, the way in the manner in which the mirage appears appears of water to see if uh, this mirage actually exists as water by going closer towards the mirage. Okay, going closer towards this self by subjecting self ultimate analysis, we're going to just ignore all the things which are not self. You are only interested in the objectively existing self. Going closer, you want to. <clears throat> you end up seeing the thin layer of the skin, which is not cell. Behind that, the fatty tissues. Behind that, and the muscles, cartilages, the bone, the whole skeleton, the, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the pancreas, the intestine, the stomach, the kidney. None of these solid parts is 
this to identify it as intrinsically or as subjectively as the self. Meaning that in the eyes of, ultimate, in the eyes of this ultimate analysis, to see what is subjectively there, you don't see these solid parts as the, the self. So, in other words, the solid, the solid parts, which comes to the element of Earth, element of Earth is not to be seen as objectively or intrinsically one with the self. Okay. Element of water, the four liters of blood, which is pumped in and out by the heart with different parts of the body. Of course, that is not me. Element of fire, 2,006 joules of energy, 2,600 joules of energy of your body and the, the body heat. Of course, that is not me. Element of air, 4.6 liters of air that you breathe in out through your lungs to the different parts of the body. Of course, that is not me. And in space, 99.99% of your your the body is just space. But I'm not a space. I'm I'm a solid person. Space is very human nature. Even that is also not me. <clears throat> Element of consciousness or the mind. Even that's also not me. I'm a male. I'm a non. I'm I'm a female, or I'm I'm a non. Uh, the non-male, non-female. But are they? My mind does not have a gender. Gender is positive on the basis of the body. So this body, so there's the, this the um, even this the mind is also not the the self. And people can see me. People cannot see my mind. So therefore, even this mind or the consciousness also not me. Give that aside. Okay. Now, what are you seeing in eyes of ultimate analysis? If at all there's something there from the object, I see the six elements. And which of the six elements is to be identified as intrinsically one with the, as intrinsically the self? None. If you're sure of this, stay in this experience. None of these six elements is to be identified as objectively as this self. Okay, so if this is not the the part of the objectively existing self, then see if it is this objectively existing self is different from these six elements. Remove the six elements and see if it exists intrinsically as different from the six elements. Remove the six elements, nothing's left there. Okay, these are the only two are possibilities for the self to exist objectively. Given that um, both are ruled out, both possibilities are ruled out. Okay, now, where is the self in the eyes of the ultimate analysis? In the eyes of the ultimate analysis, this self is totally vacuum, it's totally, it's nobody to be seen there. Stay in this experience in the form of non-affirming negative. In the isolate of the non-affirming negative of the absence of the self in the eyes of the ultimate analysis, stay in this experience for a while. And this reality is not what your mind is exaggerating. This is not what your mind is but the reificating. It is simply what your mind is discovering it. Stay in this experience for a while. Okay. Now imagine that you come out of the practice. Again, the self comes back. It appears to my mind. Yes, your mind shifts from the ultimate analysis to the conventional analysis. So the self does appear to the conventional analysis, but in the eye is empty in the eyes of the ultimate analysis, which means that uh, that self being empty in the eyes of the ultimate analysis means self doesn't exist objectively. This, the fact that self appears to the conventional analysis means conventionally it does exist. So therefore it appears to the conventional analysis. From the object, it's all empty. It's just mere like a, the mere appearance to the conventional analysis. Therefore it's known as the illusion like emptiness. Wow, oh, that's amazing. Let's go back to the ultimate analysis, see where the self is. Besides six elements, there's nothing to identify as the self. Stay in this experience for a while. No affirming negative. Okay. That's amazing practice. But what's the benefit? Yes. Just as this self dissolves in the experience of this ultimate analysis, if you subject all your miseries, sickness, aging, death, tension, depression, anxiety, anguish, likewise, just as self dis dissolves into the experience of ultimate analysis, all the miseries, all the sorrows will dissolve. 
This way, your sorrow is transcended. The moment the sorrow dissolves, your mind will feel the your mind will be uplifted with lightness and joy. A tickling sensation can flow in your mind. For some, a tinge of fear can come. This is a good indication. It's not a bad indication. Eventually, this fear will be replaced by tremendous, incredible tranquility of your mind. This means your transcendence, transcending sorrow is absolute peace. Two, the desire, that is the aspiration to experience this emptiness where all your miseries dissolve. This aspiration is known as the renunciation, the final understanding of renunciation. Students experience for a while. Okay, slowly come out of this practice. And we will move to the bodhicitta. Okay. For the bodhicitta, given that we um, we are running out of time, we will do the uh, first two immeasurables. And for 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 all of us individually, individually, it is advisable to uh, do these two methods. And not just uh, rely on the four measurables, but the two methods, equalizing and exchange yourself for others, and the sevenfold cause and effect the practice. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we'll do the four measurables, and then uh, because since that collectively. Um, if you, when we do that in group, it'll take the more time. So therefore, we'll just do the the first two immeasurables. Are you ready? Immeasurable compassion. And the sequ if the sequence can vary. Some in some texts you see the mention of the immeasurable compassion first. In others, immeasurable loving kindness first. It doesn't matter. Practice it and your compassion should grow. So some people, they don't practice and they just keep debating that we should be done first. So no point. Finally, you have to practice it. It doesn't matter whether you eat the pizza first or the cake first. You eat it, your hunger should be removed. Yeah. Okay. So this is my imaginable compassion. How good would it be? that all my dear mother sentient beings are freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. May all my dear mother sentient beings be freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. <clears throat> I'll take the responsibility that all my dear mother sentient beings are freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. The Buddhas of Bodhisattvas witness, witnessing that you make such a courageous commitment, the intense happy and proud of you. This pride and happiness invoke the compassion of omniscient minds to send forth nectars and resulting lights to us, you, you and all demonstration beings. The mere touch of lights and nectars with the bodies makes you yours, washes up all the miseries and the causes of miseries from dear mother sentient beings in yourself. Uh, you've been saying that such a miracle is happening to us all the demons and beings. You're intensely happy. Take three deep breaths. Sound relief. Next, immeasurable loving kindness. <clears throat> How good would it be that all my dear mother sentient beings are endowed with happiness and the cause of happiness? May all my dear mother sentient beings be endowed with happiness and the cause of happiness. I will take the responsibility that all my dear mother sentient beings are endowed with happiness and the cause of happiness.
the Buddhist Bodhisattvas have been saying that you make such a risk commitment to like the mother after all these many years of uh, the hardship in bringing up her children. Today, the eldest daughter is just age 12, and the eldest son just age 11. They come to the mother, tell the mother, Mother, please take rest. You've done everything for us. Now we are grown up, we'll take care of our siblings. And the mother could not believe her eyes and ears. She was so proud of you. Tears rolling down the cheeks. This is exactly what has happened to all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas. They're so proud of you. And this brand happens to invoke their compassion of Nishma so to send for the next to very soothing life situation, all the ascension beings. The mere touch lies in the with the Buddhist beings of yours, instills in all happiness and of course the happiness within you and all the ascension beings. And you were missing such a miracle happened to us all the demons and your beings. You were intense happy. Take three deep breaths out of relief. Okay, abiding this unconditional love, unconditional love, it was all the Tim Sinjin beings. Imagining that you're looking at the eyes of each of the being with so much of love, with the glittering love and affection from your eyes, to the extent that each one of them feels themselves as so special in your eyes. Okay, with folded hands. I'll say the line of Bodhicitta and we'll all say this together three times. It can be superficial, it doesn't matter. This is how we begin and this is how we practice music. We press the, the, the keyboards uh, the, 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 and then no music initially and gradually music comes out. This is the of the training, this is the of practice. Okay. And imagine that, that all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they're watching us and your two parents said, all your children, all of the members, all the demonstrations you beings, they're with you, joining you in this, taking this beautiful set of vow. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. Some of you may be feeling something. Some of you may not feel anything, it doesn't matter. Even this, just try your best to even emulate these words, is so precious. Just abide in this most beautiful mind of the Bodhicitta, most appealing mind of the Bodhicitta, and slowly transform this most appealing mind of the Bodhicitta, the most appealing this whole universe, into a spotlessly clean, one disk, horizontally sitting with the heart. Okay, that's amazing that you made such a courageous commitment to become Buddha for the benefit of demons and human beings. Uh, but what about your two parents? What about all the family members, including children, and all the demons and human beings? That's true. With so much love and affection that I should actually become a Buddha, uh, not just leave that at the, on the level of the, the commitment or the, the uh, making a promise, but actually make it happen. How to make it happen? By relying on a very powerful remedy. What is that remedy? The wisdom of emptiness. Let's quickly retrieve the experience of emptiness, which we meditated as the third seal, um, the of the uh, of the four seals. Okay, what are you doing? I'm meditating. Okay, just subject yourself to ultimate analysis. You end up seeing the six elements: element earth, water, fire, air, space and consciousness. Okay, in the eyes of the ultimate analysis, where you've come too close to the object, from the object now, where do you see, which of the six elements is the, the self? None. So this says, in lieu of understanding, the emptiness of the objects being one with its parts. 
okay, if these are not intrinsically one with this, if the self is not intrinsically one with these parts, six elements, see if it is intrinsically different from the six elements. Remove the six elements. Remove the six elements, the ultimate analysis will see that there's nothing to be identified as a self left as different from the six elements. If you're pretty sure of this, this is in lieu of understanding the emptiness of the objects being intrinsically different from its parts. Okay, given that these are the two, only the only two options for the self to exist objectively, and both are ruled out, indicates that in the ultimate analysis, there's nothing to be identified as objectively the self. The self disappears. It's nobody's discovered that the self is empty in the ultimate analysis. Stay in this experience for a while. Okay, this is most fearless mind. As we said before, subjecting all your fears to the analysis, they'll all disappear. The fears dissolve. You become fearless. This wisdom is the most fearless wisdom in the universe. Slowly transform this wisdom, the fearless, the fearless wisdom of emptiness, into a spotlessly clean, thumb sides wide vajra, vertically swinging the moon there at the moon to see the heart. Okay, it's amazing that if the moon disk now, which is symbolic of the conventional analysis, to exterminate self centered attitude. And the more the, the Vajra, symbolic of the ultimate Bodhicitta, the non dual wisdom of the Bodhisattvas, guaranteeing that you, all the mental defilements, including self grasping ignorance, all the subtle stains, both cognitive and afflictive, uh, the defilements will be exterminated completely. And then you're going to experience total fearlessness, infinite happiness. Yes. And remember your two grandparents, your children, all of them members, all demons and beings, they are suffering terribly in samsara. Yes, that's true. Remembering that, invoking incredible compassion towards them. Um, this compassion invoked, invokes your version moon at your heart, multiply infinite number of times. Share one side of the Vajra Moon at the heart of your mother, one side at the heart of your father, one side of both each one of your children, your family members, each one of your are uh, the, the people that you work place, in your country, in the world, in the Milky Way galaxy, in the entire universe. <clears throat> oh, that's amazing. Now everyone has this um the the, the shared Vajra Moon. It's, it's amazing. Let's not forget that all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas they're watching us, watching us with so much of happiness, which they never experienced before. To see that you are doing such amazingly generous, meaningful, and virtuous the cultivation, amazing. Why not we invite all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas to be the witness to our undertaking ceremony of taking the Aspiration Bodhisattva vow, and as a gesture of making this request, let us. Along with all demons and beings, let us make let us stand up to make three prostrations. And if you do have a Buddha, a Buddha picture or His Holiness the Elements picture in front of you, or any of your teachers in front of you, well, good. If not, don't worry. Just visualize the Buddha and make three prostrations together. Okay, see if you can sit on your right knees. <clears throat> okay, um, on your right knees and um, and just do this visualize all the Buddhas, Buddhasattvas, they are in the space in front of us and you surrounded by two parents, all of them members, include children and all the uh, the sentient beings with you. 
and imagine that, say that you, a, a the, for the first time as a little girl or a little boy, age five or six, for the first time in your life, you are making a public appearance on behalf of your school, and your parents feel so proud of what you're doing, and then they they um, they left behind everything to join the, the audience, waving their hands to you, giving the, you the reassurance that we are here, we are so proud of you. This is exactly what all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas are feeling today. And imagine that you as the eldest, the, 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 the son or the daughter, the eldest child of the family, but just like age uh, the five or six, and you are bringing along with you all your other siblings who are smaller than you, encouraging them to also engage in this, taking the aspiration of the vow. So this is exactly what has happened today. You encourage all the demonstrations you make like small children. You yourself is also like a small children, and you are doing this. All the Bodhisattvas, Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they're so proud, and all the children beings there with you. So with this in mind, that I will just explain the first verse very quickly. So what are you doing is taking the aspiration Bodhisattva vow. As I mentioned earlier, um, as I mentioned earlier, that the this is the greatest of the journey, the most important journey and the most meaningful journey in your life. And the work that you're doing, that you do in your life, this is the most meaningful. And um, the and because of this is a journey of enlightenment, you they say they, this greatest journey, it requires a lot of support, greatest of support, and the greatest support is the triple gem. So the first line says, I go for refuge to the triple gem. Second line, I confess the negative this individually. Um, the second line, uh, that the this journey involves the road, and the, the, the road, if the road is blocked, then you cannot undo the journey. The road is none other than your own mind. This mind must be freed of them, the blockages, of the by the mental defilements. So how to do that? Move these uh, the uh, the obstacles is by confessing the negativities. So second line says, I confess the negatives negativities individually. And if the now the road is clear, but if the car doesn't have the fuel, again, you cannot undertake the journey. So the car should be in a fuel. The car is none other than your own mind, and the fuel is none other than your virtues. The the so. The best way by which to accumulate the virtues within a short span of time is by rejoicing the virtues of all the beings. So third line says, I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. <clears throat> now that the road is clear and the car is enough fuel, what kind of journey are going to undertake? The fourth line says, I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart, the journey of the Buddhahood. Okay, so let's say this uh, three times together. I go for a future trouble jam. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. I go for a future trouble jam. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. I go for a future trouble jam. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. So the second, the, the next uh, two um, the verses, invoking Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas. So that is the main uh, practice for today and the uh, the the first verse is how 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 is it that the buddha shakyamuni succeeded in uh, becoming buddha to benefit all the beings he succeeded uh, uh, through because of two reasons first the initial initially he generated very strong motivation <coughs> of the bodhicitta and th then number two is to materialize this aspiration of bodhicitta he engaged in the bodhisattva practices like the six perfections, ten perfections, and so forth. A second verse says, if this is how he succeeded, now that after 2,500 years later, uh, so many people have benefited, the, let alone the, the non-human beings, the spirits, the gods and goddesses, how many of them have benefited? So many of the human beings benefited over the generation of the generation. It is how the Prince Siddhar succeeded in doing this. I will also follow his footsteps by uh, the by following these two things. First, generate very strong motivation bodhicitta, and then by engaging the bodhisattva practices such as six perfections and ten perfections. Okay, and do the third repetition when we say the last two lines, and likewise shall the two successful train the Bodhisattva practices, imagine that we receive the aspiration Bodhisattva vow and feel a great joy over having received it. Okay, together. Gurus, Bodhisattva, Bodhisattvas, please be here to me. 
Just as the previous Buddhas have generated the amount of bodhicitta, and just as the successful dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, like what's for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the amount of bodhicitta, and I will share two successful train in the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the amount of bodhicitta, uh, just as the successful dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, likewise shall I too successful dwell, likewise shall I too successful train the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the amount of bodhicitta, uh, just as their successful train dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, I was for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the amount of bodhicitta, and I was shall too successful train the Bodhisattva practices. We can feel the joy of having received this from Bodhisattva vow. And um, the having done this, uh, the, the just imagine that the your your parents, after the say the, all these many years of receiving complaint from the school principal about the the behavior behavior of your daughter of your son, of the, the son, and today the school principal comes. And again, the mother is really apprehensive. What kind of complaints today? And the school principal today is very different. We came to congratulate you that your son and your daughter, two of them, are appointed the best of the students of the, the school for this year. And the mother couldn't believe her eyes and ears. This is exactly what happens today, happening today, that Buddhist Buddhists, after all these many lifetimes, all since, in, since the time immemorial, that the, the Buddhist Buddhists, they expect us to be happy, not to suffer. But on the contrary, we engage all the, the cause of the miseries and shun our cause of the, the happiness as Bodhisattva Shanti have indicated. And today what we did is something so different which Bodhisattva Bodhisattva could not believe the eyes and ears. That's extremely, extremely proud of what you, you have done today. And uh, this pride happens all the Bodhisattva Bodhisattva feel invoke the Vajramun at their hearts to multiply infinite number of times. And they descend to merge with the one that you visualize your heart, thereby becoming non-dual, stabilized, and blessed of the water moon that you visualize your heart. Likewise, in the rush like rain shower, and that all the rubbings of the moon from the house of Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they descend to merge with the one that you visualize the heart of your mother, at the heart of your father, at the heart of you, each one of your uh, family members, including children, and each of the sentient beings in your your country, in the world, in the Milky Way galaxy, in the entire universe, in the ocean, in the, in the wilderness, in the forest, everywhere, all sentient beings, the Vajra Moon that you have shared with them, they're being blessed by the Vajra Moon from all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas. <clears throat> Amazing. This is so precious. And uh, the, the, this is the greatest, this is, so of all the gifts that you can think of, making to the sentient base today this is the greatest of the gift and today you gifted them with this gift and of all the the offerings that you make that you can possibly make to all the buddhas bodhisattvas the buddha shakyamuni very clearly indicated that all, of all the offerings one moment of generating compassion is far what excels of the whole universe filled with gems gold silver and so forth offered to all the buddhas bodhisattvas if this would be the case uh, as the Buddha indicated in some in the Mojana Sutra, what I mentioned of us having generated bodhicitta for the benefit of all human beings, and this today you have made this most the the, the wonderful offering to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas, and that you have to, today you have extracted the greatest meaning out of life, and this greatest meaning, and today you have, you have given such meaning to life. If you continue like this practice. Um, the no doubt you're going to reach Buddhahood very soon for the benefit of all human beings. And this is all happening because of the blessings of all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, particularly on this day, the day when the Buddha Shakyamuni performed all these miracles for the benefit of all human beings, and the day the Buddha, the, the, but that His Holiness the Dalai Lama is breathing the same air that we are breathing on this planet Earth, that He's alive on this planet Earth. So He's all because of the blessings of all these Buddhist Bodhisattvas as a gesture of thanking them let us again uh, along with all the Amazonian beings let us uh, the standard make three prestations all Buddhist Bodhisattvas
<clears throat> okay, please take your seats. <clears throat> um, indeed, this is very auspicious and very meaningful. And uh, so this is the main of the practice, Dhamma practice. And um, that if you can do something of this kind on a daily basis, uh, you will see over time you will see that you are actually growing otherwise say if you are 30 years old or let's say 40 years old so just compare what you today with what you were 20 years ago 10 years ago this is much more the same only things that people more experienced in what life is beyond this it's just the same in terms of compassion it's just the same in terms of the iq is much the same in terms of, uh, say, the overall joy, it's just much more the same. And sometimes it can be worse. But if you do this over time, you will see that the progress happening deep inside you become happier, your happiness expands, and your compassion expands, and your, say, the understanding of the reality that things are like illusion, it can also become more and more stable. It can go deeper can become stable, then you'll realize that this is real dharma. Okay, so the, this is all because of the, I say, the, the great Narada masters, initially taught by the Buddha Shakyamuni, later on commanded upon by the great Narada masters, and today we have His Holiness of Dalai Lama. We are so fortunate that this is what is being encouraged by His Holiness for all of us to do. So having said this, uh, they, in this life, we are very fortunate, and um, you and myself, each one of us, will try our best to make sure that the remaining part of our life is not wasted, that we do something of this practice rather than being, you know, uh, the, say, the uh, drugged on something else, which has nothing to do with the bodhicitta and wisdom emptiness, and think that there is a dharma. So let us not deceive ourselves. Let us make sure that um, our life is really of meaning. Um, okay, so with this, uh, we will, what about then the, in the future of times? So, uh, to make sure that we will get the opportunity for the same practice in the future of times, two things to keep in mind. One is that in the future of times, that you be connected with this dharma. Number two, after connected, then you rigorously engage in this practice. Two things are required to keep in mind. In other, in other words, to create a strategic uh, planning for a future life. The first to be connected is by including very powerful prayers, number one, and wholeheartedly flow in this, number one. Then number two is, once you're connected, then rigorous engage in this to find the joy in what you're doing in this life. So these two things. The first one is to, to be connected, make a very powerful prayer, not just say the prayer, but in, with the, say, the motivation vault, uh, the very the power of the intensity of the motivation involved. Okay, let's say this three times together, uh, with all demonstration beings together. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided with the compassion of Buddha and, and be able to uphold the two precious bodhicitas even across my life. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided with the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the two precious bodhicitas even across my life. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided with the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the two precious bodhicitas even across my life. So now the following verses are extracted from Guided Bodhisattva's way of life. This is to invoke the joy in having generated bodhicitta. So then next life, you hear about the teaching of bodhicitta, instantly you feel the joy. Joy is triggered as a memory, uh, re retrieving the memory of the joy over the practice. Then this will help you to engage forcefully into the practice of bodhicitta without uh, the um, lapse. <clears throat> In order to further increase this bodhicitta from now on, those with discernment who have lucidly seized and awakened the mind of bodhicitta in this way should highly praise in the following manner. Today, my life has borne fruit. Having well obtained this human existence, I've been born in the family of the Buddha and am now one of Buddha's children. Thus, whatever actions I do from now on must be in accord with the family. Never shall I disgrace or pollute this noble and unsullied race. Just like a blind man discovering a jewel in a Hebrew or Bish, I was by some coincidence that awakened mind has been born within me. It's a supreme ambrosia that overcomes the sovereignty of death 
is the inexhaustible treasure that eliminates all poverty in the world, is the supreme medicine that quells the world's disease, is a tree that shelters all beings wandering in the tired part of conditioned existence, is the universal bridge that relieves the freedom from unhappy states of birth, is the dawning moon of the mind that dispels the torment of disturbing conceptions, is the great sun that finally removes the mystic ignorance of the world, is quintessential butter from the channel of the milk of Dharma. For all those guests traveling on the path of conditioned existence, who wish to experience abundance of happiness, this will satisfy them with joy, and I shall place them in supreme bliss. Today, in the presence of all the protectors, I invite the world to be guests at a festival of temporary and ultimate delight. May God's demigods and all be joyful. Okay, we'll do the dedication. Last one. Okay, we'll do the dedication here uh, with these two verses. <clears throat> Let's dedicate that His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the true source, source of joy and happiness on this earth, that He lives long, and that His wishes are fulfilled spontaneously. And let us also dedicate the merits that scattered, that the Ukraine war comes to an end as soon as possible, that all these unnecessary, uh, say the uh, the the fear created in the minds of the people stop, and uh, the people they could they sigh with relief. Uh, to get a fresh breath of the the life for them, and that all the the other say the destructions happening as a result of this war, like even in Russia, how many people they are going through suffering so much in Ukraine, in every in the other parts of the world also, and all these the the, the border tensions among different countries they stop, that the leaders they come to sense with their greatest sense of compassion and universal responsibility. And let us pray that the, the, the true teaching of compassion, the true teaching of the, the wisdom, as uh, taught by the Buddha Shankamani, uh, that it thrives in every nook and corner of the universe, whole world and universe. And through a concerted effort, my personal practice, the delegate merits that's gathered, that through a concerted effort, you'll be able to experience the bodhicitta and the wisdom of emptiness as soon as possible, and that you'll be able to guide uh, the all the demonstrations and beings towards ultimate happiness and fearlessness. And may the teaching on bodhicitta and the teaching of wisdom and emptiness thrive in every center and every place in the world in the minds of all demonstrations and beings. With this mind, let us dedicate merits as following. I dedicate the merit thus gathered to the realization that these in the prayers of the Buddhists and the Bodhisattvas for three times and to the holding of the doctrine of scripture and insight. May all lives through the force of this merit, never separate from the four wheels of the Mahana vehicle and accomplish all the stages of the path renunciation, bodhicitta, perfume in the two stages. From my two collections, vast space that I've amassed, from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds to wisdomize blinded by ignorance. Deyata om gate gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswaha Tyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswaha Tyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswaha Okay, thank you. 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 Thank